Espérate. Por la bloqueadora. Y Esteri se está conectando. Your your phone is your the image of your phone is, is frozen as well. Mine. Oh it's no, yeah. yes. yeah, I I I show you in WhatsApp. And can you can you ask Esteri if she she's having problem with the connection? No. no. Mm -hmm. And I get a I get Farida. Elena. Hola. Mama into the Indagon. Moto. Octal and Mesa. Hola, papá. No, 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 estamos conectando. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien, claro, que la queremos conocer. Ya. Bueno, nosotros ya tenemos ya controladísimo. Ahora. Hello, Deborah. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, we can hear you as well, but we can't uh, see you. You can't see me well? The, the image is frozen. Oh, oh. let me see. And, and Esteri is uh, trying to connect. We can see that she's uh, trying to connect, but um, yeah, now, now it's okay, your image. Yes, perfect. Okay, thanks. Perfect. Like that is perfect. Okay, that's fine. I think I just need to find a way of light protection. We're going the other side. We are um we are going to get the people that are waiting uh in the waiting room of the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Uh so and we start presenting you, introducing you, and uh and so we get going a little bit so we, we get all the people that are waiting okay we wait a couple of minutes to see if Esteri can connect as well okay 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 all right so so, and Sarah, we are going to, to introduce you before, both in, in English and in, um, in uh, Spanish. Spanish. So, uh, you can talk then in English, and uh, mm -hmm. but the introduction will be both in both Spanish and English. Okay. Hi, Esteri. Hola, Esteri. Hi, Esteri. Can you hear us? Hello, I can hear you. Okay. okay. And do you have a video, Tamara? Hello? Yes, I'm trying to set it up, but yes, very soon. Okay. okay. How are you? Thanks. And can you see us? Oh, Eleanor is also on. That's great. Where? Where? 
Y bueno, vamos dando la bienvenida un poco a todo el mundo que se va conectando poco a poco. Y vamos a silenciar los, los micros de, de, de los asistentes y las asistentes. We are, Sarah, just welcoming people. You, you can get, you can leave your phone on, uh, Sarah, please. A ver, a ver si este se puede, la podemos ver. Oh, and, and Eleanor. Hi, Eleanor. Good uh, day, Hello. Hi, Elena. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Good. I will lost you. All right. How are you? I think you are in a show now. <laughs> Yeah, are, I'm usually going recording. on. Yes, if you need, if you need to come back later at 12.30, it's, it's okay. We can, uh, um, you can enter later. You can reconnect later the, to, the, to the meeting. Okay, so they're still setting up for the show, so I can join you guys for a bit. All right. Ah, that's good. <laughs> Just a little break from work. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so I can join you for a bit until they are done with the setup. Okay, we are uh, going to um, introduce a little bit uh, the festival celebrating womanhood and uh, welcoming the, the people that, are, that have joined us both here and, and online. And uh, I, we can see Esteri as well. Hi, Esteri. Hi, how are you? In, in Uganda, in Kampala, yes. I think the three of you are in Kampala, or maybe Esteri, I think you live in Nairobi. I think Esteri lives in Nairobi. I'm in Kampala right now. Oh, you are in Kampala as well. Okay. So uh, I think we can start. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm, yes. I'm going to talk first. I'm going to make a little introduction. Okay, this I am Giovanna. Hello, hello, uh, our friends there in Uganda. Uh, um, I'm going to speak at, at the beginning in Valenciano, not even in Spanish, and then we will be translating into English and Spanish, um, sharing with Deborah, you know, the introduction. La primera cosa que voy a decir es que estoy muy agradecida de que por fin podamos hacer esta, esta reunión a estas dones maravillosas de Uganda, porque la, la, la vegada pasada va a ser muy compleja porque va a tener reelecciones y entonces no había manera de comunicar, es va a entallar todas las comunicaciones de wifi y era bueno, incluso estaban muy preocupados. Yo sé que Débora estaba que no podía ni dormir apenas ¿no? de pensar que no tenía comunicación ni per WhatsApp ni res. ¿no? Entonces, en cada que parezca una tontería, el hecho de que estemos así y podamos escoltarles, pero no al tres, es una mes, mes que un, algo súper maravilloso para la audiovisualidad, es un momento de tranquilidad, de saber que estas dones continúen y continúen allá y continúen yo también. Eh, esta, la conferencia es Las mujeres en la industria del cine en Uganda. Conferencia virtual con Sara Kitsa, Miss eh, Galle, directora del festival Celebrating Womanhood y cineasta, y con las cineastas Eleonor Nawiso y Esteri Tebandeque. Nos acercamos con esta, con esta mesa redonda al panorama audiovisual en Uganda. Descubriremos lo que significa ser mujer y directora en este país y miraremos maneras de poder colaborar y crear conexiones entre España y Uganda. Sara Kitsa Niskaye es la directora de este festival Celebrating Womanhood. Sara tiene estudios en democracia y desarrollo, comunicación y ¿no? Es una directora y productora, ficción y documental, con más de 20 años de experiencia en cine, televisión y reportajes. Es además coordinadora de la Macula Campata International Film Festival y del Congreso de Cine de África Occidental. Siempre ha usado el cine 
y el audiovisual como herramienta de cambio y para programas de divulgación. También fundó su propia productora y hace dos años empezó el festival Celebrating Womanhood para dar voz a las mujeres y visibilizar sus trabajos. La, el Native Voices International o Native Travel Festival eh, es un festival itinerante que llega a las partes más rurales de Uganda, a las aldeas, involucrando a las comunidades locales a través de talleres sobre conocimiento básico de realización de cine, periodismo y habilidades multimedia para que participe de los procesos que los afectan, demostrando que solo ellos tienen el poder de determinar y cambiar su destino. Amakula Kampala International Film Festival, Native TV, Uganda TV, todos ellos participan. Y creemos que esto es un punto muy importante, ¿no? porque nos recuerda también a una época nuestra donde también teníamos que hacer, bueno, continuamos haciendo ¿no? un ejercicio de dar a conocer. Voy a, voy a decirlo en inglés lo que acaba de decir eh, Giovanna. Um, so I'm going to introduce Sara. Um, Sara has studies in, in democracy and development, communication, journalism. She's uh, a director and producer of fiction and documentary, and with, with more than 20 years of experience in film, television, and reports. She is the coordinator of the. She was the coordinator of the um, Amakula Kampala International Film Festival and the West African Film Congress. And she has uh, always used cinema and audiovisuals um, as a tool for change and for the out, for outreach programs. She also founded her own production company in in Kampala. And two years ago, she started the Celebrating Womanhood Festival to give women a voice and make their own, um, their work visible. The, um, the festival Celebrating Womanhood is organized by Native Voices International, which organized the Native Travel Festival, which is an itinerant festival that reaches the most rural parts of Uganda, the villages, and involves local communities through, the, through workshops on basic knowledge of filmmaking, journalism, and multimedia skills so that they participate in the processes that affect them, proving that only they have the power to determine and change their destiny. Vuelvo al español. Como dije, desde hace dos años, el festival se, se, se ha organizado el Celebrating Womanhood Festival, que ha sido nuestro festival invitado en, en, en esta edición del festival. Eh, es un festival de cinco días celebrado, celebrado durante la Semana de la Mujer en Kampala, o sea, en, 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 ahora ya, ya será el festival en, en, en alrededor del 8 de marzo. Y el festival quiere usar el medio audiovisual de cine, eh, media y arte para promover la igualdad de género, poniendo a las mujeres al centro de sus propias historias, ofreciendo una plataforma donde compartir esas historias. El festival está organizado por la ONG Native Voices International, eh, poniendo a las mujeres en el centro de sus propias narrativas. Y mm, ofrece también diferentes actividades, proyecciones, teatros, cuentacuentos, performances, conciertos, danza y todo tipo de actividad que pueda visibilizar el trabajo de las mujeres y los retos que aún encontramos para alcanzar la igualdad. Eh, también se han creado oportunidades de networking, liderazgo para jóvenes mujeres y directoras, visibilizando el trabajo, sobre todo de las uh, mujeres rurales, tanto a nivel local como internacional. Y ahora voy a decir eso en inglés. El Celebrating Womanhood Festival es un festival de cinco días celebrado durante la Women's Week en Kampala, pero es más o menos alrededor del 8 de marzo. Um, with a view of applying the universal language of film, media and art to promote gender equality. This is done through putting women in charge in their narrative and providing a platform where it is shared. Since 2012, Native Voices International, a non-profit making organization that applies to media and art in empowering communities to take charge of their self-determination has been holding the festival annually. The festival has been applying diverse artistic activities, including film screening, plays, storytelling, performance, music, dance, comedy, drama, and poetry, among other activities to highlight women's achievements and interrogate challenges they still face in the struggle for gender equity. The festival has also been profiling women's story, particularly rural-based, with a view of creating new heroines 
and hailing and sound heroes, particularly rural based. It has also been providing networking opportunities for aspiring women leaders, stakeholders in the women movement and supporters, as well as recognizing outstanding contributions to the women movement by awarding individuals and institutions that contribute to the women cause. Now I turn into Spanish my speech, my introduction. Elena Nawiso, una de las actrices más reconocidas y galardonadas de Uganda, ha trabajado en numerosas obras de teatro y cine. También se ha lanzado en la dirección y la producción, fundadora de Nawiso Films y directora de esta productora que se ocupa de producción cinematográfica, además de radiodramas, publicidad, documentales, etc. Eleonor es una de las mujeres que estará con nosotros. Hemos presentado a Sara. Estamos presentando a Eleonor. Ha trabajado también en la organización y producción del Euro, Euro East African Film Festival, un festival que empezó en el 2014 y que es una iniciativa conjunta entre diferentes misiones europeas y la delegación de la Unión Europea en Uganda, proporcionando una plataforma para mostrar un patrimonio cultural europeo, Uganda y África Oriental, todo junto a través del cine al público de Uganda. De hecho, hemos proyectado su primer largometraje como directora, Red of Thorns, durante esta edición del festival. Y de hecho, la película fue ganadora de mejor largo de ficción en la última edición del festival, Celebrating Womanhood. Ahora, Trevo. So, um, I'm now introducing Eleanor. Um, Eleanor is one of Uganda's most recognized and award-winning actresses. Um, she is working in numerous theater and film plays, and Uh, she has also um, been thrown into directing and, and, and the production. She's the founder of Nabuiso Film. She's a director uh, of this production company that deals with film production, as well as radio drama, advertising, documentaries. As we could see, she was in, in the middle of a shooting. Um, she has also worked in the organization of the Euro East Africa Film Festival. The festival uh, has started in 2014 and is a joint venture between different European missions and the European Union delegation to Uganda. It provides a platform to showcase the cultural heritage of Europe, Uganda and East Africa through the art of film to the audiences in uh, Uganda. And we have projected her first feature film as a director Bed of Thorns during this edition of, of the festival. And the movie was um, awarded with the best feature film uh, in the last edition of the Celebrating Womanhood Festival. And last but not least, um, hablamos de Esteri Tebandeke, que es una actriz, cineasta y artista visual. Su trabajo cinematográfico más importante fue uh, para Walt Disney, la última producción de, para una producción de Walt Disney, Studios The Queen of Katwe, protagonizada por la actriz ganadora de un Oscar, Lupita Ngoyo y David Oyelobo. Esteri ha exhibido sus películas como actriz y directora en numerosos festivales como Toronto, Londres, Luxor, Durban y entre, entre muchos otros. En su debut, como su, su ópera prima como directora, es Little Black Dress, que también pusimos en, en esa última edición del festival. Eh, un cortometraje que eh, tuvo su premier eh, en el Festival Internacional de Cine de África en Lagos, en Nigeria, y estuvo en la competencia del Festival eh, de Luxor. Eh, formó parte como guionista del equipo de una webserie que se está desarrollando en colaboración con, con estudiantes de cine de Uganda, Kenia, Ghana y Alemania. Y... Este proyecto se rodó en Accra, en Ghana, y actualmente se encuentra en postproducción. All right, now, so Steri Tevandeke is an actress, filmmaker, and visual artist. She has been an actress since 2008, performing in a variety of theater and film productions in Uganda and around the world. Her most notable or more remarkable film work was in the Walt Disney Studio production, Queen of Cadwell, starring Academy Award-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o, and David or David Oyelowo. Esteri has had in films as an actress and director shown at numerous festivals like Toronto International Film Festival, BFI London Film Festival, Luxor African Film Festival, Rindance, Uganda Film Festival, Durban African International Film Festival, etc. Esteri was part of the writing team on a web series being developed in collaboration with film students from Uganda, Kenya, Ghana, and Germany. This project was shot in location in Accra, Ghana, 
and is currently in post-production. Little about this, her director debut as short film that was shot on location in Nairobi, Kenya in April, 2019. The film premiered in competition at, at the 2019 edition of the African International Film Festival in Lagos, Nigeria, and in competition at the Luxor African Film Festival. In fact, her short film was also screened here in our, uh, you know, in our festival, and uh, it is the winner of the, you know, the category in the Celebrating Womanhood. So now that we have introduced our guests, I think that it's time so we can uh, give them yes. the word. Yeah. Um, Pasamos la palabra ahora y así ya conocéis perfectamente a nuestras invitadas que creo que es muy bonito saber todo el trabajo que están, que están haciendo. Vamos con Sara. Sara. Ah, un momento, que me he pedido que le pase. El... ¿Aló? I kind of lost you. ¿Aló? Hello. Hello, Sara. Hey, hello. Hello, I kind of lost you. Please, uh, we need to speak. I just sent you the, the link uh, via mail, so um, for the presentation, but... Um, okay. Okay. I'm also uploading, I'm uploading the video right here. Now we lost you. Oh, I've seen the link. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. So please tell us a little bit about uh, you sent me a link. I don't know. Hello? No, I can you hear us, Sarah? I am, I'm, I'm, I, I, I missed you. Did you say I tell you a bit about? So the, the festival celebrating womanhood, where does it come from? Why did you decide to uh, have this kind of initiatives in, 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 in Uganda? And, and how is it working? It's, it's very interesting this uh, going to different villages with the, the audiovisual. And, and providing people with these skills. Is this, how this is working? Is this improving uh, the condition of, of rural people? Tell us a little bit about the, your experience as a producer, a director in, in Uganda. Okay, okay, thank you very much. And thank you for the introduction. Thank you very much for also uh, friends. I'm really, really excited that the winners of uh, Humanhood first year, uh, this, the films we are shown during live cinema, that means a lot. Uh, hello, Erin hello, uh, Esteri, I'm happy you could join. Um, celebrating Humanhood Festival yeah, yeah. is actually a media and arts festival, but it's to amplify women's voices, your visual, uh, the, the strength and their uh, potential visual. We started it, we started it in 2012 in, in uh, the mobile cinemas that we had, because we had uh, we had outreaches where we partnered with the Italian corporation to, to hold um, campaigns, especially to do with uh, women early health. But when we went to the countryside, we found that the women were excited to actually have a form and have a voice. And it goes back to after where a woman does not talk, so that basically suppresses a woman, a well-behaved woman is quiet. But during, during these um, festivals, the, the, the festivals would go to the side, would not in there was this unconscious task, women issues. Our campaign was helped, but they were talking about issues, domestic violence. They are talking about the fact that they are the ones standing to the gardens, 
that the ones who are doing and they take money about and how many of them. And I'm saying that they are because the men do not get those. Hello? Sarah, excuse me. Yes, we can we can really the, the, the are you hearing are, me? We are hearing, but with some some problems. So maybe you want to um switch up the, 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 the camera and or or maybe talk okay. a slowly or to start up the microphone. Yes, because we can't um no I would like that to go on. I don't know why it's the same in Maybe switch off the camera. And okay, the so I don't know why. Oh, let me check. Uh, yeah. Trying to check. Can you probably having uh, someone as technical possible that try to enter the computer? So I may have I may to have leave to for a sec and then come back. Okay, so can. Can we go on, as, uh, Eleanor, maybe to you, while uh, Sarah is, is uh, solving the problems, maybe yeah, you, you, can, you can exactly tell us about your experience of um, being okay. a, a, a director, an actress, and, and funding your own production company in, 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 in Uganda. Tell us a little bit about um, the, your experience in, in the field of, of audiovisual. When did you start it? Okay. How did you start it? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm um, really grateful. Uh, a bit about me. Uh, well, my journey is quite interesting. I started doing TV at the age of nine. And uh, I was doing a show on a local TV then. And uh, at about I did my first uh, stage play. I moved on to uh, with a famous show back then called The Host. Aired about 100 episodes, uh, through which I can a lot about uh, acting, directing. Uh, after that, when the hostel ended, I figured we want to do something for ourselves. We had to start. Uh, so we started Nabuiso Films, where we believed in changing people's lives through using. That's what. So we've done things. And uh, all the movies I've done have gone through many festivals and have gotten us to different countries to screen. And as a female in Uganda doing film, it's and it's good we are being impressed as a director. Eleanor, sorry, but we are having the same problem. So I know that it's not very nice, but try to turn off the camera and just work with the video to see if it's working better. Okay, thank you so much. Let's try, thanks. And yes, okay. you, were, you, you were saying the difficulties of women in Uganda for making film, that's what we heard, yeah? Okay, so making film uh -huh. in Uganda is uh, growing at a very fast pace. And um, as a woman doing film in Uganda, as a producer and director, it's quite promising because my work has been embraced across the globe and uh, we've been recognized in different nations, uh, different film festivals. We've won many awards for all our work. We've won in London, in China, in uh, Burundi, um, in so many festivals. And um, for me as a female, being embraced as a producer is quite good for me because now we don't have to depend on the men producing movies anymore. We can educate ourselves and uh, make films and uh, learn a lot more about production, post-production and grow with that. 
and I believe I would like to train more women to grow with this. So it's an interesting journey. For me. And I'm really honored for having been part of the jury with the Donna Cinema. And um, I've grown my portfolio festivals where I've been jury and uh, also in Okay. Um, just a second. Uh, Leonor. Yes. yes. Do you hear me? So do you think that you have mentioned two things that I think are quite interesting. One is the difficulty of being a producer as a woman. And the other thing is that if being part of, uh, you know, selection committees or juries has helped you to meet to, for networking or at least mm -hmm you know, to know other people and other realities. Yes. Um, the exposure that comes with having your film go around to, to different festivals has kind of given me space to show my art, not just in my own country, but in different countries across the globe. So as a thing, I don't have Fear, yeah. knowing that that work will go across the globe and be watched. Uh, the difficulty was having a platform to, you know, exhibit my work. And uh, with all the was coming up, men, it's been good for us to have a platform to air our movies and meet different female producers across the globe and uh, get to know each other. And, for me, this shows that we can have co-productions in the future, which is good for us as women in the film. See, uh, I want. I was wondering um, if you have some um, some some numbers of of uh, how many how many women directors are in in in, in Uganda. Um, how many? Uh, I mean, if it's if it's common, if it's growing. I mean, well, what I've seen, the the, the future is promising. Uh, <laughs> so, um, if you can give us a little bit of a number of, of how many people, how many women are, are directing, and at the moment, if there are uh, some some helps, for example, here in Spain. We have um, public uh, funds that that help the, the the cinema industry. If you have that in in Uganda, how is it working? If there is some some incentives for for women in 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 direction. Okay, okay. so here in Uganda, we have um, I could I say that women who and produce quite a number of movies are growing in number and offhead. Okay. I could say about uh, about eight women I know who are producing. And for the director, I could say I know about another maybe six women who are really going into production for film. In, we, have, we have many different workshops that come up with uh, different people from different countries. For example, last year, but one, I happened to coordinate the Women in Film Initiative workshops with the, with the US Embassy. And uh, here we get to have people coming from different countries to train the women in Uganda. And uh, there are other different companies that come up with different workshops like Multi Choice, Dolby. And uh, all these folks come down and announce workshops that are going to take place. And, and they are going to help people and, and grow their craft. So when they announce for the classes, women, women happen to show up and learn. Because most women here are self-trained in film. The workshops are, are helping us grow our craft as women. And we're getting better at what we do. Uh, thank you, Leonor. Just one last question, and then we go for study. Uh, she looks beautiful there with, uh, you know, uh, waiting for... for <laughs> so, Eleanor, so tell me the last question uh, would be, like, you're saying a lot of workshops. That means that apart from directing and producing, there are more women 
um, studying how to be the directors of photography or how to move, you know, the steady cam and things like that. But that's more for men. No, actually, there is more women taking on classes. We actually have many women taking on sound classes, um, director of photography, and uh, not just actors, but also directors as well. For example, the last movie I did, Bed of Thorns, had only female. female. Yeah. So we had the directors of photography, we are women, um, the editors were well. men, the sound the recorder, sound the boom speaker, were women, and um, women, women are, are learning a lot more behind the scenes than just, just being, being a in front, in front of, of the camera. camera. We are getting behind the scenes and learning more on the craft yeah, of sound production, production, directing, uh, director of photography, and um, I, I believe the number is really growing for women in the scenes. That's fantastic, and uh, we really yeah. appreciate that your the crew in your film were were women. That's fantastic, and Thank you. let's go to Steady now. So Steady, can you tell us about you and your work? Hello, can you hear me? Good. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you about. Am I clear? Yes, we can. We, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear Maybe you we well. will have the same problem once you start talking a little bit. But let's see. Okay, so um, I, I am a scholar. Uganda, Uganda, I live between Uganda and Nairobi. My husband and dad moved to Nairobi. So I'm going to turn off my video so I can speak with you. Okay, yes. So um, my life will make very exciting. And I could tell you how I got into film. It wasn't just that I, I chose it. Uh, I was obviously I used to be a contemporary African contemporary, and uh, one day while while at the national, I saw audition. So I thought, why not give it a try? I mean, everyone was given an opportunity to audition. So I walked into the room and auditioned, and just like that, I got the lead role. And that's how I started in film. That was in 2008, about 13 years ago. And after that experience as an actress, it was, for me, it just, I could not stop wanting to tell the story. However, I, as an actress here in this part of the world, it feels like acting does not give you the power to tell the kind of stories you want to tell. So I think, decided very recently to go into writing, directing, producing, and also distribution. I feel like these are the, the these are the terms of filmmaking that really give women power to change the narrative in the industry of filmmaking. So my first film as um, a director was Little Black that uh, showed at the Womanhood Festival. It was a short film of about 23 minutes uh, about a woman is struggling with infertility, a couple that's struggling with infertility, and knowing how the narrative goes, it's always a woman's fault if a couple is not having children. So this woman is with treatments upon treatments for fertility, only for her to realize her husband is actually the problem and decided to give that information to himself. So I feel like this is something the world knows about, but no one really talks about because the people that tell stories are men. Men can tell stories from the angle of women. Men can never understand how a woman feels. Men can never see um, something through the eyes of women. Yes, they can tell stories as close as possible to women's uh, emotional feelings, but they'll never really understand what it's like because they're not women. So I, I would love for more women to get into storytelling, for more women want to write, more women to direct, more women to produce work, 
more women to get into distribution. Very recently, a film that I'm co-producing and co-writing and also going to be acting in with my husband as the director has been um, selected for Less is More in France, and then it will be going to Lithuania later in the year. And this is very exciting for us. The film was chosen for Google last year, and then it's going into a workshop uh, next week, 1st of March, and then it will go to France, and then it will go to Lithuania, and hopefully we can get funding. It is very exciting for me, because the story is still about things that women go through and the world decides to keep quiet about, and yet we need to hear more of the story. We also just have a small distribution company called Kiasi, and Kiasi focuses on distributing phones that are of for people of African descent who feel that the world needs to see more stories from African. And I feel that Africa is just so warm and so beautiful and so colorful and so musical that the world doesn't seem to see a lot of um, a lot of those stories. And I wish that we would all just um, be allowed to see the Africa that I know compared to the Africa that I see in the news that is full of disease and suffering, and Africa that is just a very warm and hospitable people with very incredible stories. So, so far that has been really good, but I'm really excited. I'm working on my next film. I am working on a um, partnership with a friend that helps support women um, in filmmaking. So what we are doing is coming together and getting women that have done films to write a, we're calling it post-mortem of what they've experienced in film. So that, that when another woman come in and do a film, they can go to this uh, platform and read what, what the other women have experienced, what they're making films, and they do not go into such mistakes again. It's just a way to the hands of women to each other so that we can be able to grow the number of women that are telling stories. Thank you so much. Thank you, Steady. I think that it is fantastic to see you both, you know, and I appreciate this idea of vision. I know that we all appreciate it because, of course, we women, we have to tell our stories, right, the way we, we, we have lived them and the way we see life. And um, and I and I just wanted to to share with you that funny enough we have the same problems here, you know. So Leonardo Sterisara, and I don't think that you're alone because in a way, even if we're talking about Europe, we have the same issues as you have. We still don't have many directors of photography. We still are fighting for becoming directors and producers. We do believe that if you don't have women distributors, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have women programmers in cinemas, it's impossible. If the selection committees, if they are not at least 50-50, it's impossible. I mean, there, there is a lot of work to do and it's nice to see, more than nice, but you understand me, it's like touching in a way, you know, that we are all fighting for the same ideas no matter where we are. So thanks, uh, Steri and Leonor. And uh, for you, Leonor, one question. Do you think that there is a future that could change all this? Or are, are you pessimistic or optimistic about it? I, I do believe it's going to change because the narrative has changed. Even the way men think about women in film has changed. Changed. It's not like back in the day where women had to stay home and not work. And um, women have stepped up to do a lot of work in the industry. So I believe the narrative is changing. It's changing until it's already changed in different states. And it's still changing because now women have taken on different roles. Um, even if men are doing the distribution, they're embracing the women's movies because the men are standing up for the women's rights now and they respect the women's need now 
we believe equality might not come in for gender equality, but acceptance of the difference in gender goals is going to change in the narratives ahead. So I believe it's going to be for the best. Um, to what Eleanor just said, if anything is possible, and even just sitting here with all of us and talking about the possibility of the future, is even just in films done by women, uh, stories told by women, is already change that I have seen. So I think the, the future. Uh, I've read some of the future is, is female, the future is a woman. It's very possible. And women tend to take things and nurture things and grow things and turn them into something very incredible. So it is possible. And I believe that the change is here and it's happening already. And it's going to even as an explode into something more as more women encourage more women to come into film. So I think the idea is for us as women that are already telling stories, already making films to encourage other women to come into this space and be bold about it and not be asked for permission, just take up space and tell the stories we want to tell. Uh, just uh, something that comes to my mind. Uh, well, Deborah, if you think you, you, can, you have to stop me, you stop no, me. But, just, just, you know, let's see if, if Sarah is, if Sarah is uh, on. But just uh, for you to think about me while we try to reach Sarah. But for instance, we have noticed that, of course, we are part of Europe, but there is a difference between UK and France and Germany and Italy and even us regarding to women and film, you know? Uh, so do you think that when you are saying that it's because maybe in Uganda there is a change, but you know that maybe another countries around you, you don't have, you don't see those changes? Or do you think that it's something that it, it is something general in Africa that is changing? Is that for Stephanie or me? You know, for, you know, both of you. Both of you. Both of you. Well, Esteri, can I take it? Yes, yes please. please. So even in Kenya and Tanzania yeah. and, and Rwanda, Rwanda. Burundi, there are so many women who have come up to produce yeah. film. I, we literally have a group uh, for women that are producing film. And we all pick up on each other's uh, content and support each other. So, so if the narrative changed in Kenya and Tanzania and Burundi, Uganda changed long time ago. Because at least in Uganda, women are given first place despite the cultural differences or gender differences. Women are respected more compared to other countries. So I believe Uganda will grow faster for the women in film. Okay, I understand. That's, uh, that's the question because as you see, you know that the, there are not the same rules in Denmark than in France or in Italy. So that's why I was asking you. Of course, Europe is changing, but it's uh, funny now that suddenly some countries that you think that are more developed, they are more restricted about this the subject, you know? So that was it. Let's see if Sarah is uh, I don't able. Know. I don't know have... if she can hear. I mean, she's connected, but... Um... She's silent. I don't know if she has uh, been. Okay. Sarah, can you reactivate your uh, your sound, your microphone? Sarah. Sarah. Of course, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I keep the bed. The camera is high. Hi, hello, both of you. Hello. hello. Hi, my name is Guadalupe, and uh, well, I I organize in Madrid a little festival about uh, African women directors. 
Uh, so um, I would like to share with you some thoughts I've been thinking while you were talking. Uh, I think uh, in the films we, we, we are used to see about uh, women African directors, it is true that, well, we are talking about a huge continent, of course, and it's difficult to generalize. But uh, I think women, uh, when they are behind the camera, they really have an interest in, created, in creating images that can represent them and uh, that can make uh, visible the feminine condition. Uh, it, it, we could say in order to break the, the cliches and the stereotypes, uh, they have been always represented in cinematographies and in societies that uh, are normally very dominated by, by the case of, of men and patriarchy. And, uh, but what I, I've been noticing during these last years is that uh, there are new films and new women making cinema uh, that they don't even have to talk about political issues or about uh, women uh, problems. And uh, they are just making uh, entertainment films. I was thinking about, I don't know if you know this South African director, Nosifo Dumisa. She, mm -hmm. uh, she, she has made the first um, series produced by Netflix, Blood and Water, which is pure entertainment. And she has made another film that it's named Number, number 37, that it's pure entertainment. So I would like to know what you think about uh, this new issue in, in, in African cinemas, and if you agree, of course. Yeah. yeah. Well, I... Hello? Yes, yeah. I do agree on the new wave. And because I believe when you do entertainment, then they go. Yes. Hello. Are you Are you there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's better when you're doing entertainment for commercial reasons. Speak out as women. To speak out as women through film because it's the only voice we have to speak out. But um, I I also do entertainment movies, and I think at some point we need to stop. You know, trying to just make movies about the women and how they are suffering and consider doing the narrative of, you know, entertainment for commercial reasons. So it's okay to do commercial movie, but also I would stick to my vision as now we saw films, we believe in producing content to change people's lives by speaking out through societal issues that are not talked about. So we do both entertainment and uh, of course societal issues are addressed through our films. According to, well, following a little bit of your idea, I was thinking that uh, maybe if, even if you do commercial films, uh, maybe you can have this vision inside the film. What worries really me is that if we as women, we still have a man's vision in our brain. That's something that worries me in the sense of, uh, we, we have grown up with stereotypes that are in our mind. So it doesn't matter if we're doing uh, films about women's issues or political issues or commercial issues, maybe for me, but I don't know, that's something that I ask you, the audience, and also, you know, the problem is if we have in ourselves recognized that we have still patriarchal stereotypes in our brains, and that maybe we have to fight against them, you know, uh, well, dot, 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 dot. I mean, you know, that's like a thought. So I don't know if you want to talk about it or maybe we, we say you, Sarah. We, uh, Sarah is, is, is back. We uh, maybe we, we, she, she, I suppose she, she would like to uh, do her presentation. presentation. And, then, yeah. and, then and we maybe we can this. come back to this, uh, uh, Reflection and, and, and uh, thoughts. Hi, Sarah. Okay. 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 
wear temporary legs so, which is even when you you're making film as a, a woman filmmaker or when they're talking about women from who's who's <laughs> is also very important and uh, the reason why it's very important is for instance I'm I'm sometimes listening to people in camera. As the other two, yeah, it's it's really a pity, but uh, it's better if you turn off the camera and just uh, we can so we can hear you better because now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let me try and switch up the camera. I want that. Okay. So video. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so I wanted to pick up from from where Deborah left off from. Uh, before I go to talk about the festival, like the feminine gaze and uh, with which gaze do even women filmmakers tell stories and with which gaze. And I, I would not like in this aspect to limit it to, to only like film. I, I'm very happy, for instance, with what Estelle has talked about. I was so excited to, to watch her films because half the time when someone cannot give back, it is a woman's fault. It's never a man's fault. So I feel she's coming up with a subject that is never discussed. I, I liked that Bed of Thorns was done by women, the gaze was feminine, but half the time that's not what comes. To be honest, I'm happy with these voices that are coming out, but half the time you're listening to radio, you're on television, and probably there's a male presenter, and the male presenter puts a woman down, and the co-presenter who is female laughs. And I have had also women stereotyping fellow women, and the need for actually having the feminine gaze, the feminine voice from a feminine perspective is actually so high. I had Eleanor talking about how in Uganda the, the, the women are allowed. And I, I felt that Eleanor is right, but Eleanor is at a place where I was like eight years ago. We went to the US, we were doing our um, fellowship in community leadership. Now I was working with a lady called Prose. Prose works in a radio station up country at Mali. And Prose was saying that girls are married at 10 years. And I felt so bad as a Ugandan because I know that in Uganda that's not allowed. So I really argued with Prosy. The next time we were going to give a presentation, Prosy did not come because she told me, Sarah, you're talking about Kampala. And as a journalist and a documentary filmmaker, I've been going up country and I was not going to see a sense of that. I just managed recently to send Prosy an apology. This is about seven years later saying, Prosy, I'm sorry. Because what has happened? Uh, Deborah, I sent you a link to that video, which is still in process, the documentary, where we find girls who are 12 years being married off in exchange for cows. We find that early marriages and child marriages and, and the authority and are happening. So there is a few people who have come out like Eleanor, like the number of women and the policy. Because in principle or in principle, our government is actually promoting gender equity. But is that what is happening on the ground? That is not what is happening on the ground, if you really know. Yes, there's some achievements and milestones that we have made in as far as trying to bridge, for instance, the education gap. But when you look at the overall picture, there's cultural issues where, for instance, a woman is not supposed to talk. That is why, for me, a film like Lenoir's is very important, where the director was a woman, the cinematographer was a woman. Eleanor was with me during the festival, and girls were telling us about how, uh, no, a fellow man, Robert and Pamela, I have a video that I'll be sharing with you. He was telling us that he was witnessing a girl being taken advantage of because she wanted a role. So for me, having Eleanor, having Rehema, having a story, tell stories, coming out as directors, coming out myself as a documentary filmmaker, but I'm looking at the people who actually are doing fiction film where a lot of exploitation for people filmmakers is happening. It is happening. It is real. I remember people like Eleanor who stand up for it. But what about the So we've lost you. 
Eleanor talked about it. But what happens? We have hand we have, we have films, our girls are there, and a lot of them are being risk accurate for women, but there is also milestones that have been made, which is why we have had achievements that we are making, which is why I'm happy with people like Eleanor, uh, Esteri, and a number of other female filmmakers. I'm also happy with some feminine men, people like Robert and Kamba and others who come on set and say, I, I just want an actress. And I would like to look at the cultural perspective where, for instance, it is the culture that tells you if you're selling something that doesn't run out, then you can give it out. That is a culture saying that sometimes women can use or people who want to exploit women to say that since whatever you can give you to share, you don't diminish, you can keep sharing. That happens. I have also seen some film girls who go to the set ready to entice men, not to show their talent, but to entice men so that they give them a role. But that woman will not go to a set where Eleanor is the director and do the same thing because they know Eleanor is looking at the talent. And then a number of girls will not allow to be taken advantage because they know if this guy, this male director has refused, I'll go to Eleanor. I'll go to Estelle, I'll go to Lehema, I'll, I'll go to Nisha Kalema, and many others who are funding. So it's a great achievement, but, but a lot of exploitation is really happening, and I didn't know how much until you start working with these people. So for me, having female directors is really important. Having female producers is critical. Uh, according to the um, Uganda Media Women Association, 24% um, of stories or voices in the media. Only 24% are, are women, uh, the rest are men. But even then, the women who come out, they are, they are coming out. They are coming out as products. They are coming out as sexual items for men's visual pleasure. They are coming out when people are promoting products. But when they are talking about politics, when they are talking about Forming economy, pushing the economy up there. The women are not voted. In politics, the women are not voted. Yet they are the ones who are driving this country. When it comes, for instance, to agriculture, where we have a it's the women who are doing the labor, but it's not the women who are creating the payment for it. It's because they don't own the land, because they don't go to the market. So having women come out and talk about these stories, having stories that come out that portray women in the light that I want to portray them. There's a, a, a picture that I wanted to share. For me, uh, we were just and looking at celebrating Women Who Festival. So we wanted a woman is using a clapper because that is also very symbolic in, in the film industry. And we got a gentleman to design that. And we had a woman who was dressed. And the man who did it wanted the woman naked. Now, how many women go with a clapper when they are naked? But to a man, they wanted that visual pleasure. That's how they were looking at a woman with a clapper. And, and for me, when Justin said, oh, it's a man, it made a lot of sense. It, it reinforces why it is important for us to have festivals of women, to have women as directors, to have women as producers, but that they are not from the feminine gaze. And, and, and yeah, the, the policy, the government in principle is very supportive, but the need for platforms for women's voices, the need to have more female directors is huge is high, is critical, especially when you go to the countryside where over 70% of our population is based. And so I also needed to talk about uh, celebrating womanhood. The earlier question that you asked, why did we start celebrating womanhood festival? I'd like to share that I'm a journalist. And I had just got out of uh, school and I was training. I had never seen a camera. But I wanted to do video stories. There was a guy who was a cameraman who had stopped him since yeah. And he wanted to put me down and many other female uh, reporters. So when we would go and ask him to, to, to give us to tell stories, to go with us to make reports, he would, and this is a new report, and he would ask, where is your script? And he said, why do you want a script for a news report? Then he would refer, he would really want to put us down, show the power, especially because we could not operate a camera. So I decided 
I have to learn how to operate a camera. So I learned, and those days we are using cameras like VHS, not digital cameras like this. I learned and I would tell a story and I would go with the camera as I go. And then they, 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 now the camera may start a thing and I go control them, they put the right script. And I said, have you got a script? But what he told me is that I needed to be in charge of this by understanding of a camera. When I, even after I learned how to operate it, I now I start talking with people in the field and you I go with the camera, you are the director, you're the producer. And I remember the first film that I did, which has never come up uh, because I, I had sold my car and I had gone to do a film called Omuku, which is head of circumcision. And the guy I went with the film kept saying, you mean you're the one who wrote the script? I didn't know, I didn't know that, that because I told him. Then I said, why? Why did you think that? Let's just focus on this. But then when we went in the field and he started rushing us and giving us orders, I said, you know what? Let's uh, have to take a you want to go. What he did to me was to delete the footage. And that was for me part of what was the climax of the film. It was very telling that like, I knew how to operate, but I also depended on him. But what happened if I didn't know at all? I was so devastated because I had sold my car. I didn't have my car. I didn't have money to go back and reshoot. And I was using a DVX. Nowadays, DVX actually now, um, because people are now looking at 4K, 6K and more. So I have it in my archives. But why am I sharing this story? I'm sharing this story that even when we were, and I'm the director, I was the producer because I had the money. This guy still had to show me that he was in control by deleting footage. And I have sometimes gone with people and they tell you, they, they, they are the cameramen and you're trying to direct, they are like, but I need this. And you are the director. And I am not someone that you can easily toss as a director because I even sometimes know where it's coming from. But it is coming from a point of view that even the women and men are also products of their society. It is easier for someone to take direction from a fellow man than a woman director. That is why one of the things is to have actual women trained. Last year, year we seen someone from Ghana, she heads Ghana Broadcasting Television, and she conducted a, a technical workshop. We had about nine people enrolled for lighting, cinematography, and, and for me, it meant that we've just concluded a technical lab right now, and uh, some of the people who attended, we had about eight ladies. Some of them were actors. They were saying, now we want to be in charge. When uh, Eleanor conducted their, the, the, the lab that they were doing, for, for me, it meant a lot. We had just trained them. We had to send them to come back to one of those technical skills because a lot of women are usually writing. A lot of women are sometimes directing. But then when it comes to the technical skill, you'll find that even if you are the director, if you don't know camera or there are no other female cinematographers, then you are sort of like at the mercy of some of the egoistic uh, cinematographers. So, so having a bed of stone and the DOP was a woman. For me, it means that because that means we are going to see more DOPs. And it's very, very great for me. I celebrate the film, not only as a winning film during Celebrating Womanhood Festival, not only for the subject that it was talking about, but also what it means in, in the sense of putting women in charge of their storytelling processes both technically and creatively, and it, it's really good. But when after that, the other thing is, where is the platform? Because like I have just said, according to the Uganda Media Women uh, Association, but also ACME, they are saying that 20%, ACME, they are saying 20% of the voices in media are women, and even then, over issues where they are being stereotyped, not over issues where actually they are representing what the majority of our women are doing, which is working on the farm, heading offices, uh, pushing for leadership and doing a number of things, teaching people in the country, those things do not come out. So apart from as celebrating womanhood festival, delivery provides for the voice of women from a women's perspective. And so women who do films knowing that when they do their films, they have a platform where they wish. But we also take men's films, 
that are talking about women's film. Why? Because we also want women, men to appreciate and push for the women voice. Because we also have a lot of women. And one of the men, I mean a lot of men, one of the men I for instance celebrate is Eleanor's husband. Because Eleanor's husband is always on the side of Eleanor, supporting her. In as much as she's a great filmmaker and talented, she would be tough for her as she had a husband who was competing with her, who was trying to put her down. So we celebrate those kinds of men. We call them feminist men. So we also provide them a platform where they can actually showcase their work. Sarah. Yes, I thought that this, uh, the last thing that you said, well, you, you mentioned in, uh, in all your speech in, a, in different moments, this is Giovanna speaking now. And uh, for me, it's very interesting what you said about feminist friends, because there is always this issue that uh, usually men tend to think that we women, feminist women, we are against them. But in fact, what we try is to be together to, to just make a better world, a more equal or equal, whatever, you know, like. So uh, I think that your idea that you said, Sara, about letting, letting them, in inverted commas, uh, come into you know, your festival or your, your association, trying to understand and telling stories, working together for achieving that goal um, is something that is good, right? But, but then I was thinking, in my experience here in Spain, I don't know, that's, what, that's the question I'm gonna ask you, is that when that happens, men usually, not always, but usually men suddenly uh, become like very main explaining and they try to explain us what feminism is. And they say, okay, because I have been studying this book and that book, and I'm gonna tell you exactly what is femi feminine, feminist or not or what we should do. Do you have that issue there? Um, I, I, don't know, I don't know if I should say that we have this issue there or not because culture is very, very important. And a lot of, uh, there are also some lines that are, are drawn in terms of not only gender roles, but also understanding what feminism is and what feminists are, and even people who are empowered, because there's something, for instance, called Nakawanga. Nakawanga is a male a cop. So if you're called Nakawanga, they are referring to you as a cop, as, as someone who is in discipline. But th those appear. But even if those appear, I would like to say that there are many men who, when they come on board, may not necessarily understand feminism. So it's also up to us who are the feminists to bring them on board, but they in principle want to support. But there are also men who understand feminism, but want to define which level and how far feminism can go. Those are also true. So as us as, as, as feminists and as people who are working with, uh, with them, it is going to have to be a continuous journey of explaining. But there are also men who are more feminist than the female than the women themselves because of their exposure, because of uh, how they, uh, the, their surrounding, who they work with, who they relate with, where they have been. All those also exist. But majority of men would still understand, for instance, there are very many men who would say they push the women for, for the women cause, but not in their arena at home or in their private, but probably publicly, they can do that. So it's a very tricky situation to say, is it happening in Uganda? I would say on an individual basis, a number of people, men are there and want to support, especially when it comes to their sisters and their daughters. And they will be selective if it's people in their office or if it is people who are, for instance, their wives at home, they explain. But then there are also men who are really feminists. It's us to continue doing that journey. But what I observe is that there is a tendency to draw a line of how, fem how far you can go as a feminist. Then culture is used as an excuse. But that doesn't mean that there are no men who 
are really feminists, but what we go through in terms of explaining the men and the faces is happening. What I also feel is that for us, this is a journey we should continue with because if we do not have them to understand, then we will have no, no cheerleaders, we will have no people to support us, we will have less voices. But also the fact that they have sisters and they have daughters is something to work on. Plus the fact that the policy is on our side, even if that policy is not so much as put in practice. I am not sure if I have answered your question, but how I have understood your question, that's how I, I interpreted it. Yes, Sarah, you have um, fully answered my question. And in fact, we are not, uh, you know, so far away in everything we share, you know, uh, just what you said is part of what we are living here too, um, you know, because the cultural thing is there. So thank you so much. We were thinking that maybe it would be a good moment for sharing the video. What do you think, Sarah? Would you like that? Please, I share the link. I don't have it. Okay, thanks. So we'll go for that. We're going to share the, the, the video. Vamos ahora a compartir un video con, con vosotras. Vale. Para, para que veamos el trabajo que hacen. Pero ya no. Vale, es que tengo en mi ordenador. Who is maybe we should share with, with him? What happened to you? Here. Eh, ah, sí. Vale, nada, simplemente que lo que anemos a hacer es que le anemos a pasar a, a, a CIAS Technics, ¿vale? Para que os compartáis quién es, porque si no es duplicada de U. Entonces, esperé un momento um, y enseguida lo tenéis. Uh, now, our friends in Uganda, we are going to share this video with the technicians here so they can uh, share uh, everything in a nicer way because they are the, we, I don't know what happens, but we are duplicating the sound and we don't, cannot hear it very well. So just uh, one minute, please. Thank you. Good night. A ver si por Pueden ir a ver de espacios culturales, de base y tal, pero hay que. Se dice por tu propia obra de mujeres, igual que aquí. Exactamente. Sí, sí, o sea, de las muestras. De hecho, el otro día estábamos hablando. Que te has descargado. En países como Alemania y cosas así, la sociedad 
no la, no la norma del gobierno, pero la sociedad es muchísimo más atractiva a sus conceptos que la educación. Entonces, a veces. Bueno, queda. Y. No, que mientras. Eh... Los descargan el vídeo. Si hay alguien en, en, de los asistentes también en remoto que quieren hacer algún comentario, está, está el, el, el chat disponible. Si queréis eh, compartir o, o incluso eh, activando el micro podéis participar. And so, so Eleanor, Sara and Esther, we were just a uh, Um, saying to the people uh, that are um, both here and also online that if they want to share uh, something, um, they can both through the chat or uh, um, they can uh, raise their hand virtually and, uh, and talk directly while we wait for the video. Sí. Hola, María. Hola, buenos días Hola. a todos y a todas. Se oye con esto, oye con esto. Te sí, vamos sí. a poner un poquito más grande, así para que te vean. No sé. Sí, sí, sí. Se oye bien. Que te oye bien, sí. Pues a mí me ha. Bueno, intentar en directa. Eh, gracias por la iniciativa uh, de uh, Cinema. Y también a estas mujeres maravillosas y les quería hacer una pregunta a la de si queréis. Sí. Eh, thank, sí. thank you much, oh, much. Very, 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 and, and Sara, I'm so happy, so happy to, to know, know more about your work. work. I'm uh, from Valencia and I'm part of a collective called Afro Latidos, yeah. African Party, and I'm doing my first film that I was filming in Senegal. And I'm so happy to know more about you, that you are experienced in this area. And I wanted to know how can we help you to, to, to have a right to work and about the festival here in Spain, in Valencia, through maybe the friends of uh, Dona Cinema. How can we support you and how can we create a connection from women here and women there about cinema, about feminism, and about other movements? Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Gracias, Maria. So I don't know who wants to Sarah. reply, Sara. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Wonderful to meet you. Uh, I'm excited that you 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 you're interested in actually knowing how to support and how to work with us. And I'm also really pleased that you could join this conversation. I look forward to knowing more about you. Uh, first of all, I'm excited to tell you that this year we were at a guest festival at uh, Festival Dona at Cinema, which is one of the things we really, really are happy about having Estelle's film, a Renoir's film, and uh, we also had in, in Search, which were shown and they're winning festival. For us, that means that because we are having voices of filmmakers outside, shown in, in Spain and probably now meeting you and getting to know you were supposed to come where it's not because of COVID or you know, probably the in person. But uh, we are going to have Johanna, your, your man and Deborah come to Uganda. I want to also still invite you to come and join us as a filmmaker. They will be facilitating workshops. That would be great. But uh, also, collaborations because not just Sarah, but also with filmmakers in Uganda. I'm sure I'm even if you are a Sarah, myself as a documentary filmmaker and other women filmmakers, the fact that we've been having conversations and I have to say that we have similar experiences. How do we share? How do we do films jointly and probably take them to festivals or cinema halls together? We would be really, really excited to have collaboration. Of course, um, 
if you can facilitate workshops, if you can come and visit, all those are some of the ways we might support. Of course, other, other festivals, we, we, we welcome support, all in kind and, and financial towards the festival. Holding a festival can be very costly, but also visiting, of course, festivals about exchange and network. That would also be great. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Hello. So the oh, Esther wants to say something. Yes, yeah, to Maria. Yes, please, Esther. So I'd like to talk about how we can um, help each other. I would like for us to just exchange emails and start a conversation. Uh, I'd like to like, openly just throw my email into the into the chat right. And whatever it is, whatever conversation women telling stories as women filmmakers all over the world can start a wave that we might not even be aware of. So I'm grateful that we are looking to make connections and I'm very excited for connections like this. Thank so, Esteri, yeah, why don't you write uh, in the chat? Uh, what you just said about dot com, so everyone can have yes, to yes. see it. Yes, but okay, and, and you can do Sarah and uh, Eleonor. You can do the same if you want to share in the chat with the rest. You know, uh, a website or something, so you have info. Everyone can have info. That would be great. And then we can um, download the chat. Yes, because uh, I mean the the idea of this of this uh, meeting was also to put in contact these two realities from, from Uganda, women from Uganda and and, and uh, directors, producers, or just people interested in cinema um, with, uh, with, with these, these women. And um, I'm also thinking about uh, maybe it can be start a collaboration for the workshop that you do in, uh, in these outreach programs that you have that I think are so interesting. and. And if we manage to go <laughs> next year, I would love to, to, to see this in action. And, and so maybe if we have some talent here in Spain from women directed or, or any um, role in, in the film industry that would like to go and, and, and go and, and provide this kind of workshop that can be a good connection. Because I think for what you're saying, these outreach programs are, are very important in getting things uh, better and, and um, okay, so it's kind the of connection that exactly. we would like to do. It's the, more it's, we know that's the point other, of this meeting. Yeah. The, the more we know each other and the more connection we have and the more we understand each other, the stronger we are as, uh, you know, as women fighters. And of course, uh, being able to change a little bit this cultural or whatever world that we live in. Now, let's go to for the video, yeah? What is time to do at home in Uganda? Um, well, the movie is called Bed of Thorns and it's an off-male made crew movie. The first ever off me make crew movie. What inspired me was to show that we make her do it all. I wanted to bring the woman being in front of the camera, being behind the camera, show that we make her actually be behind the scenes. Many times women are denied the jobs of DOP, director photographer, they can't hold a camera, they can't do the sound. But you'd be surprised that so many women out there who have actually studied to do these things behind the scenes. So for me to do the movie Bed of Thorns and have it as the first off me made crew movie was quite inspiring and empowering to the women out there that they can actually do it all. The significance of uh, a festival that is going to show women and embrace women and their roles, for me it's more appalling and it's more empowering for women out there because with such a platform to show that someone has been acknowledged and awarded for their strength as a woman behind the scenes or in front of a camera, for me it's more empowering for other women and girls growing up because then they know that they'll be 
privileged and they'll be embraced and they'll be awarded for the great work they're doing. If you award a woman, if you embrace a woman and if you nurture a woman to do great, then you're embracing and nurturing a nation. No one tells women stories better than women. I would not know what's in a guy's mind, so why would I tell their story? So, yeah, women understand women narratives more. So they, it's, it's best for them to tell their own stories more than anything else. Everything I do is to put the woman to the front. But, um, well, right now I'll tell you for a fact where my direction is. Uh, while we are talking about women and gender equality, um, there is also the men. So I think this conversation is to have all parties involved so right now, uh, I would say my passion and my drive is to tell stories that put both of them at the table to talk about gender equality and, and issues both from the women and from the men. Nowadays we find a lot of women are starting their own production houses, doing uh, directing, um, going into production management and being producers and even executive producers in their own accord because we reach a point and you realize it's either I do it or I do it. Like there's no other way around it because it's either you meet somebody who's going to trust in your idea and run with you uh, and hopefully take the risk with you or you just take the two resources that you have and you start doing it. And when somebody has seen the work that you can do, then they will be able to easily buy in without you compromising whether it is the sexual advances or compromising any other level of integrity. A lot of the women who made it in life did not go through that. But the world will always say, oh, she gave in, that's why she's making it. A lot of the women who made it big and successfully did not give in to sexual advances. The ones who gave in to sexual advances, I can tell maybe at just 1%. But since people know about the 1% who gave in to sexual advances before making it, people want to blanket it on the other 99%. So yes, there are few. Because I mean, everybody's face is different. But how lucky did you get? Like, let's say the bets, you've seen how many the bets, only one out of a million wins the one million. Because the one million people have to give a shilling so that you can win the one million. So, is it better to hope that you win the one million or is it better just to work hard and do it? To recognize the women for their work, but also to provide a platform for women's stories. I think that's very important. Also, it will be leveling the ground, you know, the, play, the playing field, because uh, let's say in every 30 directors, there is one female, you know? So to recognize the work of the women will inspire more women to join the industry and also it will empower when you showcase women's stories, when you showcase stories that portray women in a different light or a better light, can I say, then it empowers you. Because when you look at most of the stories, or let's generalize and say the African woman, most of the stories, the women, are, they are portrayed in, in a sad way, you know, in a they're portrayed as victims, yeah? And they command not much but pity most of the time. And this trips, it has stripped us as women of our dignity. They're portrayed as victims, yeah? And they command not much but pity most of the time. And this trips, it has stripped us as women of our dignity, you know? But when you look at our mothers and you look at the women in our lives, they are, even if they've gone through hard times, there is a resilience to them that is not captured. Mainly because the storytelling in all forms has been done by not women necessarily, by different people from who are maybe sometimes not even African. So it's very important because there's some stories that require more than empathy, they require more than than imagination, they need you to have lived, to have, you know, to have gone through that. So, yes, definitely, this festival is very important. Yeah. important. Yeah.
¿Puedo? Sí. Eh, bravo, bravísimo. Ok, so, yes. Uh, I think that Deborah and myself, we think the same thing. I think that we still need women's film festivals. We need uh, models that, uh, you know, younger generations uh, know. And in fact, we have a um, program called El Programa Atenea that you, some of you have been part of it, I can see. And uh, it is uh, meant for uh, students, women students, that uh, they are in the last year, they have just uh, finished. And is, so they have tutorials where this, they have these tutorials with women that are produ pro producers, uh, filmmakers, directors, script writers, everything. So they can have models. So at least, because if not, if you ask a woman uh, student uh, anything about one film or any, you know, only uh, male names come out. Yeah. So we need more and more models so they, they understand. In fact, many of these um, to tutors that come to, to this program, they have won many prizes uh, too. Yeah, like the Goya Awards, so maybe they have sure. gone finalists for the, the Oscars and that. And nobody knows that they are there. So yeah, thank you so much for this video. And maybe we should go to some questions because I mean, it's- um, Yes. Yeah, yeah it's- if there uh, are some comments from the- people here or people in the chat that can uh, raise their hand or write directly in the chat or uh, if they want to see sí. y mientras también yes. tengo que deciros en, en español que lo que vamos a hacer es eh, dentro de un tiempito tendréis esta charla subida con subtítulos para que la podáis eh, eh, volver a ver con más detalle todo lo que se ha dicho Y, la, y también sí. un poco para aquellas personas que a lo mejor el conocimiento del inglés no es tan amplio, pues puedan, sabes, pues recibirlo con mayor gusto, ¿no? So we are, um, for Sara and, and, and the others, um, we will, we will uh, upload the, the, this uh, um, meeting and, and conference in, in our YouTube can, uh, channel with the subtitles, so for the people and, and then we can show it um, and share it. So I don't know if there is any more comment. Um, I don't know, I, I mean, I, can I say something? Um, sure. uh, it was very interesting what uh, Guadalupe was saying about uh, this, uh, and I'm, I'm sure she's, she's more expert has been in the, in the African uh, um, festival. Um, about women doing just uh, new, but it is new. I mean, I think it's very good. I mean, from, from my point of view, of course, it is important that, that uh, we talk about women's issues because as we always say, if women don't talk about that, they always uh, are uh, um, like silenced or taboos or, but it's good also that they just don't talk about women's issues all the time. Um, I'm, uh, that's my point of view. And I don't know if, if you want a, to share it. Glasses, um, you know. And because of course, it's the, it's the view of the world from another point of view that doesn't mean that you have always talk about gender, feminism, and but put the feminism into the, the yeah, everyday yeah. life. No? Yes, I, I also think that this, this wait, wait, wait. Momento. I think it's also important because that also means that there's new audiences that are asking for another African cinema. So it's not mm -hmm. only because women are making new ways uh, of, uh, or, or, or trying to discover new ways of making cinema and poetries and, uh, and narratives, but also because there's new audiences in the world that are asking for new ways of making cinema in Africa. So mm. I think that's very important also because these new models, it's what you were talking about. Uh, the, the young people can uh, feel 
recognized in these new models of uh, showing women, because when women show women, they show normal women. Exactly. Subjective <laughs> women. So that's, I think that's the, the, the big issue in, in this uh, idea. And we don't realize how important audiovisual is now. Now, I mean, when I mean now, it means for the last 30 years or something, or even more, 40, 50 years. Because I remember that when I was a kid, you tend to read books, yeah? And through books, you had, sometimes you discovered solutions to your problems, or you felt recognized in the characters you were reading, right? So that's a way of changing your brain. So if the only thing you're reading is something that is uh, written by men or women, but in a certain way, you have in your brain certain models, right? Meanwhile, apart from the house and the education, because you know that sometimes in house and education, you can be perfect, but then the input of the songs and the reading and whatever you have changes your mind. But then it's sort of visual. And that's also something that I want to, to ask our friends in Uganda, because I always thought that all the issues is politics as well, is culture as well. And nowadays, everyone that is looking for a solution when they are 13, 14 years old, and they, they are in love of someone, and suddenly they had a little problem, suddenly they see a film like um, Crepusculo, and that's not the best example for your problem, you know? you know? You know what I mean? It's completely <laughs> different. So in a way you're getting models that are not the best ones. So that's so important that in audiovisuals, there is uh, another point of view, commercial, non-commercial, but there is another point of view. So and, I do agree with that. And, uh, so, and, and let me say that, that with, with Africa, I mean, Africa, there are so many countries, different countries, it's, is, is even more important because we, we, we have a very stereotyped image of Africa. The, 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 the images that, that comes and may sometimes also the films that, that arrives here in, in Europe are, are always the same. So for that, we choose uh, Eleanor movie or, or a stereo movie. We thought they were... Um, great in this sense because they show uh, something very different that we didn't uh, see and 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 so um, um, we like that about about that and and also I think a, a platform like Netflix that shows something so different and arrives in in so many households and and it's very important. Sarah did a comment about um, uh, about all this. I don't know if you want to um, uh, say something, Sarah. She was saying something about. It is very important also that we show that the, the men in the, in the gaze of, of women has we uh, women have always been uh, uh, depicted by, by men in films so many times and it's also important that with this uh, change and more women in direction that we show how we see men <laughs> in in not just how we see ourselves but also how we see them. So I don't know if, if uh, Sarah, you would like to, to say something or Eleanor or Esteri about all this? Maybe one, one, one at a time. Uh, Sarah first. Okay, thank you. I think you captured it very well for me. Uh, when you say that uh, we would like to, to men to see how we see them because a number of things come out. For instance, there is a, a film called uh, called uh, Veronica's Wish. It is made by a filmmaker called Nisha Kalema. She's a Ugandan filmmaker. And for me, I loved that film because I was seeing the man I want. You see, half the time, men are also showing the women because they are sometimes showing how they want the women. So they are able to control the narrative and how now we craft, and a lot of women craft themselves or frame position themselves, right? But we also want men who are caring. So Nisha created a man who is not us the usual Uganda man, but a woman, a man 
all Ugandan women, I'm sure, would aspire for. A man who hung in there for her when she was sick. It is also important that they see that. It's also important they see how we take some of the things they do, some of the things we really don't look down on them, some of the things we admire. What is it we admire? What is it we look down? Who is the man we aspire for? That is going to also come from us. And we, we can now steadily and slowly help in crafting male behavior. That is one of the things, but also support and a number of other things. Thank you so much. So yes, I don't know, if Eleanor, if, uh, because I think she needs to go. I don't know, Eleanor, if you would like to say something quickly and, and maybe we can, uh, I don't know if you have to go. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I'm really sorry. I thought this would be shorter. Yes. I'm on a film set. And I have to get back to it, but um, I'm really grateful I've been part of this conference and I've learned so much from it. Women getting together to learn so much from each other is very important once in a while. And um, I believe the narrative is going to change for the women making film. And I believe if we make film as women and not just talk about the women issues and include the men as well, this would be embraced by the different different audiences because I think sometimes the men don't want to embrace women movies because they are kind of only considering the women in their movies but also men have issues I remember I had that feedback when I did Bed of Thorns and everyone said how about the men how about the men they're also beaten talk about the men and uh, it made me believe that I need to make film not just for the women but also for the men so I believe going commercial with entertainment and not just different issues to be addressed to be good to have film across different uh, nations. So I'm really grateful for being part of this platform. Sadly, I have to get back on a film set, but I've learned so much from it and I'm really happy to be part of this. I would like to connect with all the women here and uh, get to know you and probably even get to work together because with co-productions, we can cross many boundaries together. So I'm really grateful and uh, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you, much, Eleanor. Bye. Why? Uh, maybe we'll just know if, uh, if, if there are any questions or not, because I think it's time for, you know. I don't know, know if Esteri would like to say something about exactly. this, and then, yes. then we can, then uh, can finish. Yes, finish. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you so much. I don't think I can add any more to what Sarah and, and Eleanor have said, apart from just maybe like, like re echo but everything they've said and more is the truth. And if, if we walked into storytelling, not from a place of men have had all the years to tell the stories, now it's our turn. So we're going to tell only stories about women. Then we come in with a different perspective into telling stories. Um, something else I've learned over the years is that men support each other no matter what. That's something I've learned. Even if a man is saying something silly, his friends will support him. Men will support a man. Something I struggle with is that men, women still struggle with the idea of supporting each other. So if we stop competing with each other, I think we are coming from a place of change and we can affect and tell the kinds of stories we want. So this for me, this conference for me is, is just, a reflection of what I've been looking for about uh, places where women support each other and are not just trying to put each other down or compete against each other, but places where women are holding each other's hands and wanting to work together and wanting to tell stories that are about entertainment, yes, but also about women. I would also like to say something about um, telling a story from a woman's perspective if you gave the same story to a man and, and gave the same story, like gave the same script to a woman and gave the same script to a man, that story is bound to, to be told differently. Even if it's about women's issues, the angle with which is, from which it's being told will always be different. So the angle that a woman decides to tell a story from is the angle that she feels should be seen is the way that she feels a woman should be seen and i feel like women tend to tell women's stories much as the, the woman seems to be like she's going through a lot of issues what i notice with women's stories is that they tend to overcome 
like if a woman tells a story of a woman that's struggling through an issue of, for example, domestic violence, the woman always tends to come, come uh, end up succeeding, walking away from something that traumatic, that tragic, something that, um, that's not good for her. When I watch a story like that being told from a man's perspective, the woman usually ends up dead or usually ends up prostitute or usually ends up like the ending to that story is never what we see from the women that we know have gone through these things. So women telling stories of victims of suffering of stuff like that always give you hope that a woman can, can um, can overcome anything. So we should continue to tell these stories and inspire women to tell more stories like that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esteri. Very good, your, you know, your sayings. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, Sarah was, was also uh, very active in the chat, um, say, saying um, that we also need to, to, to consider the, the, the struggle of this, the, we, all, we all know that feminism and patriarchy, uh, not feminism, that patriarchy and, and gender stereotypes affect men as well. And that, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit summarizing uh, what she's saying. I don't know if you want to um, say, uh, just end up a little bit, Sarah, and maybe at the end we can see your faces with the camera on. Just, uh, Sarah? Right, Sarah, I totally agree. I think we totally agree with what you said in the chat. You know, uh, of course, you know, men suffer also this pat patriarchy because they have to try to be sometimes someone that they are not. And that also leads them to violence sometimes because yes. against them and against the world. So, yeah. Because she's talking about uh, an environment that is the, the, the cattle keeping community. Um, which is, uh, of course, a reality. Uh, I don't know at all, um, and it's also quite interesting, you know, to, to see where tradition can can play a, a, an important role. So I don't know if you want to say something, Sarah, and uh, yeah, maybe to, say to goodbye, close, and, and, and we yeah closure, and and we can switch on the cameras and see your. Uh, I'm really sorry that we couldn't see your face uh, all the time while you were talking. Uh, first of all, to say thank you so, so, so very much. I've been looking forward to this. I am so glad you didn't give up when we had uh, elections, uh, the, the government cut off internet and this had to be postponed and you hung in there and you still were able to go ahead and uh, have this conference. It's very relevant. Erin has said so, Esther has said so. We are so happy to make the links. Maria, nice to meet you. The other people who we may not have talked to that are on here, I definitely look forward to continuing the conversation. I look forward to you visiting Uganda please remove the if and confirm because I can't wait to receive you in my country. It will be great if you can come with other guests. Then we can look at if it's possible, if it's not. I hope this is not the end of it. Maybe they can come for future festivals. I look forward to screening the winning films uh, that won this year to our festival. That would be great. The, I already loved some of the films. I love the, the films like... Uh, all of the films were so beautiful, well done. The, the themes, like the one where Eleanor was talking about where they think fertility, so what are the issues of, of women who don't want to have children? That's a, a, an important discussion here. The Bush School, uh, telling the story from the club. All those films, they're beautiful, and I can't wait to, to show them. I can't wait for you to come and possibly facilitate workshops. I can't wait for possibilities of other Ugandan filmmakers knowing we have a Fest, a sister festival in Spain and probably even if we may not be the, the guest festival next time but probably have more filmmakers now understanding not just in Uganda but in Africa I sent this to Ladima festival which is which has a festival of African uh, film festival women film festival and uh, they were excited about this so I foresee other festivals coming and seeking collaboration with you and possibly learning more about Spain learning 
learning more about you and that's getting more friends there and filmmakers here networking it's um it's really great even what we've been able to talk about so it's mind opening i'm also thinking about a number of things even if i said we should have male film what else am i picking from this conversation and uh for me it's it's, it's really really great i'm excited and Thank you for even thinking about having like these partnerships with Africa. The, the, the things you say that are common there, but there are also other things to learn from, other things to, to borrow from. And uh, I really look forward to a continuation of this conversation, even, if, even after the conference. And of course, again, to receiving you to the Pearl of Africa. I'm sure we will. Yeah, thank you so much. Be in much, contact Sarah. and, uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can, because uh, we, we have been invited to go to, to the festival next year, and maybe when we can uh, travel. So hopefully we will be there. We will bring the the film from the from the the Donny Cinema, the winners, and then some other films from from the Spanish directors. We are in contact, and then uh, thank you, thank you for for these nice words. Yeah, thank <laughs> and, you so uh, much. Yeah. Please switch and on your camera just. Uh, just one moment, you and I don't know if Eleanor is still there and steady, so we can see you and, uh, and say, yeah, and say goodbye. goodbye. Well, see you later then, not goodbye, just see you later. Oh, great. So thank you so much. Thank you. We did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Hopefully we could Bye. see that. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.